Live from ClickOrlando.com, this is News 6 at 5.30. This is a News 6 Plus takeover. Here now is Matt Austin and Ginger Gadston with Florida's 4th Estate. Hey, welcome back to Florida's 4th Estate, everyone. You know, we are in Florida and we have hurricanes occasionally, unfortunately, and it can just tear things apart. But it can also be very revealing, Matt. Yes, it can. It can bring about some new information on old lost treasures. And today we have some treasure hunters with us, a father-daughter duo. We have Kaylee and Jonah Martinez, who have been reaping the spoils <laughs> of Hurricane Nicole out on the coast. Guys, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. So it's great to have you. I know that this is an interesting time for treasure hunters. So can you tell us why all of the sudden you guys have been able to find some treasures? When the cold fronts or the hurricanes come up, uh, we usually get an opportunity to go out there and, and look for stuff that uh, has been lost. Mother Nature does a job and uh, erodes the sand away. And if you're in the right place at the right time, you never know what you're going to find. Okay, so I have to ask you a question. Have you found a sweet spot, and where is it? <laughs> oh, he can't tell you that. I'm not going to let you answer that question. Matt, I almost uh, had it. No, I'll, I'll that. Uh, <laughs> through, the, through the 30 years of doing this, I've found many sweet spots. And uh, I can tell you that when I find them, they are sweet. And when I leave them... There's not much for anyone else to find. There's no meat. They're very sour <laughs> when you're done with them, I bet. Yeah, well, I, I, pride, I pride myself on doing a good job of uh, picking up all the treasure that's out there. And uh, little by little, <clears throat> Kaylee's got involved with this. And uh, it's kind of something now that we're doing. And, and um, she's just having fun with it too. Yeah. So I want to talk about that, Kaylee. So I know your dad has a lot of experience with this. You just found your first coins after Nicole rolled through and tore everything up. So what was it like the first time you were able to actually get a hold of these old coins and find them on your own? It was a totally new feeling. I mean, just like holding this piece of treasure and this, this piece of history that hasn't been touched in over 300 years. It's just mind boggling. Yeah. And when you know you're holding that kind of history, do you get excited? Do you get nervous? Does it make you want to just keep doing it? <laughs> it's, it's like a, a new feeling of excitement and just, it, it's, it's a different feeling yeah. I, that I've never experienced before until he, recently you, you got to go into it a little bit more because you're out there and she's fighting the elements and it's uh it's really windy and it's it's raining and um you're finding pennies and dimes and nickels and a nail or something <laughs> like that and all of a sudden all of a sudden something better comes up and um that's what you're there to find but uh the chances that you actually do are very very slim so y you got to have that no finds or the treasure aren't before you have the treasure. Are. Uh, <laughs> that's all part of it, you know? Yeah. So when you're out there, have you found something like not hundreds of years old, like maybe a wedding ring or an old high school ring? Because we do stories of people being reunited with things. Because people go to the beach and they lose stuff all the time. Have you found something like that? Um, me personally, I have found just about any, any, anything and everything there is out there, wedding rings, um, GoPros, sunglasses, cell phones, uh, hand grenades, bullets. What? Whoa. Um, Stop. Back real quick. <laughs> everything, anything that gets lost out there. And as mother nature's eroding, that stuff gets, you know, uncovered world war two stuff. Um, it, you don't know what you're going to find. A lot of times it's uh, just junk, 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 junk. And then all of a sudden, you know, something better. Um, you, you never know. That's that's part of the thrill of the whole thing. Well, what's the best thing you've ever been able to find out there? What what What's your favorite find of all time? Uh, me personally, um, I work on the salvage boats out there. And uh, 
My favorite or my best find was in 2015. We recovered about six and a half million dollars in gold coins. Um, and there's been some other finds that aren't, it's not the value that's it. It's, it's how you find it, the people you're with, um, the history that that treasure tells. It's just not treasure and it's dollars. It's, it's taking that maker's mark and tracing that back to the manifest and learning more about the ships um, that are crashed on our coast. So mm -hmm. I feel like it's all our history. And uh, a lot of the archaeologists out there, they read books and they can tell you about the books. But we're out there. We're actually finding the stuff. So we're, we're, we're telling the story by what is actually getting found, not uh, what someone told us and passing that down and passing that down. Um, there's been a lot of unbelievable, unbelievable, unique, unique uh, finds that we've had. But there's nothing there's nothing like finding treasure on the beach and uh, <clears throat> doing that. And it's a. Uh, it's an element you're out there you're fighting the wind and you're fighting the waves and and you're actually doing what you're there to do it's extremely highs and extremely lows and and uh it's it's an unbelievable feeling yeah it sounds like a lot of hard work okay so what happens when you find like six and a half million dollars worth of stuff who keeps that um that actually <clears throat> that, that's all laid out before uh, we start our salvage year. Um, I, I run uh, with a leaseholder. So there's somebody who owns the water rights out there, the Admiralty to these leases. Um, and I have a split with them. And the state's entitled to 20% of unique artifacts. So out of my 50 that I have, my 50%, I have crew members, I have investors, I have people that are also involved with the hunt. Um, there's a lot of people that have their hands out for that. So it's not like you're, you're walking away with all this money. And, uh, a lot of that stuff is coins. Um, and I, I've passed that stuff down since the beginning when, when I started doing this, um, I like sharing the history and I think the story, uh, of where it's found and how we find it is much more interesting than, uh, a dollar value for a coin. It's just, uh, it's, it's Florida history. It's part of it. And it's real. When you're a kid, you're, you're fascinated by treasure and pirates and stuff. And we're out there, we're, we're doing this and we find that kind of stuff. Um, very unique to our coast and, uh, with hard work and a little bit of research and know-how it's possible. Kaylee, my last question is for you. I have teenage daughters. It's not always easy to get them to hang out with their dad. Is this talk about your dad and your relationship and what treasure hunting does for you guys? Well, it's definitely been a different kind of bonding experience. Um, just cause he is teaching me how to treasure hunt and metal detects and all this fun stuff. And it's just a different element, you know, being in all the rain and the wind. It's just, it's a whole different situation it's, versus than at home or out on the beach regularly. It's, yeah, it's just different. It's yeah, a dad I mean, thing. It's a dad <laughs> thing. <laughs> that's, that's, awful. that's awfully sweet. And I, I knew Matt was going to ask that question. I was thinking it, but I knew he was going to ask it before I, I got to it. But, you know, I love that you never know. It's, you know, life, it's like life when you're out there on the beach. You never know what you're going to get. You're either going to get trash or you're going to get treasures. <laughs> <laughs> and either way, you're spending time together. So that is the important thing. Jonah and Kaylee yeah. Martinez, thank you so much. You guys were fantastic. I hope you find millions more in treasure, and I hope you share it with your favorite news anchors over at Channel 6. That's us now. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, I appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Thank You're you. great. Happy hunting. Yeah. yeah. Stay with us as we break down Florida's craziest court cases. You know, this is a great state where a lot of crazy news happens. And sometimes it's national news and international news. Today, we have a great list for you. And by great, I mean just one of those lists where you think, 
oh, that happened here, uh, court cases that you cannot forget. And if you've forgotten, and we're going to remind you, I'm Ginger Gadsden. Yeah, glad you're with us today. I'm Matt Austin. A lot of people blame Florida for having crazy court cases. Well, one of the reasons our court cases are so popular is because we have a very open state when it comes to open records, and they usually usually let cameras into the courtroom and it has caused some of the wildest headlines across the nation in 2012 a 17 year old named trayvon martin was walking home with a pack of skittles and he was followed by a man named george zimmerman what happened next became national outrage this case had so much controversy, it made Central Florida a tinderbox for a moment in time and the focus of the national race debate as George Zimmerman had followed this young man and some say racially profiled Trayvon Martin at the time. It led to a scuffle between the two men and George Zimmerman then shot and killed Trayvon Martin. We the jury find George Zimmerman not guilty. I mean, I know we had the court uh, case and he was tried and, and not convicted, but it is still a case that resonates with so many people because it's it it happened 10 years ago, but in some regards, it happened just yesterday. And I know you called Trayvon Martin uh, a young man, but at 17, I think you're still a boy. Uh, you know, he's walking around with his, his Skittles and his, his, you know, his iced tea like the rest of the cases that we're going to show you today really it changed the country it wasn't just a florida thing oh. this changed the entire debate around race now this case is going to take you back in time because it really started in 1990. we're talking about terry shivo she was a 26 year old woman who fell into a coma at the age of 26 and this was in 1990 again and she was in a coma for 15 oh, years her husband michael fought to have her feeding tubes removed because he said that they had discussed that she did not want to live this kind of life. Shivo's parents said that she had a chance to recover and they wanted to keep her on that life support and feeding tube. And it just caused outrage, not just throughout Central Florida. This happened actually in uh, St. Petersburg and she was in a, a nursing home or assisted living facility in Pinellas Park, Florida. And people would hold vigils out there. And when it got to a point where it looked like uh, Michael Shivo was going to have his will done because the law in Florida says if you're married, that the person you're married to, your spouse, has the right to make that decision for you. And that's what Michael Shivo said that he was doing for his wife, Terry. This case just caused so much angst for people because she was not brain dead. And that was the. <laughs> You know, you that get was into the a lot debate of, too. That was the debate. Yes, is is she there? Isn't she there? Can she hear us? Can she understand us? Does she even know what's happening? And so, finally, in 2005, when the feeding tube was removed, it took 13 days for her to die, and it people were distraught. During that 15 year period, during this battle, not all of that was the battle, but toward the end, it certainly was. Yeah. The governor of Florida, Jeb Bush, got involved. His brother, the president, George W. Bush, got involved. Laws were changed to try to keep this woman alive. And at one point, they took the feeding tube out. A court ruled, oh, we're going to yeah. take the feeding tube out. And they did. And then they had to reinsert it because the court yeah. changed its mind on another appeal. Everybody in the country was talking about this story. Florida was the center of the universe oh. with this, and it was just so brutally sad because really terrible. at the center of it is this yeah. woman's life. And, and today people still talk about it. So the thing that I found interesting about this case, Matt, is that on her tombstone, her husband put the day she was uh, born, 1963, and then 1990, the day she died, and then 2005, the day she was in peace.
And speaking of court cases that you have to get in the way back machine to revisit, uh, this one takes us back to the 1970s. 1974, uh, Ted Bundy is believed to have committed some of the most heinous crimes in this country. He was this infamous serial killer who killed confessed to killing women in seven states, Florida being one of them. And Matt, the one, the case that became his undoing happened in your old stomping grounds before you were even alive to stomp, Florida State. Right. Sorority, these uh, members of the sorority were killed. They were murdered, dismembered, tortured, and some other things that I won't say out of respect for relatives who may still be around and people who are sensitive to things like this. But from 1974 to 1978, they confirmed that he killed at least 20 people. He confessed to more than 30 murders. And this guy was slick. When people talk about being scared of other individuals, this is like the person you picture in your brain, okay? He did the worst, most disgusting things. He would use Every piece of charm he had to hurt these women, including putting slings on his arm to pretend he was hurt, putting casts on his legs to make himself seem weaker. And he yeah, got and away got the with women this to help him. so many times. And then they would catch him, Gigi. And they would be like, well, this guy's so handsome. There's no way he's out killing people. He escaped by, a, from what I remember and what I researched, he escaped three times after they already had him in custody. This started in the 70s, but he was not executed until almost 1990. I think it was 1989 is when he was executed. It was crazy and it lasted for such a long time and people finally could breathe a sigh of relief because he, by all accounts, he was a monster. Yeah. And this was one of the first court cases that was publicized Televised. on television. You could actually yeah. watch Ted Bundy take the stand. And let me tell you, if you want a really YouTube creep show, watch this guy watch in guy. the courtroom <laughs> as he just casually is like, oh no, he's like Ryan Gosling up there. Uh, just trying to charm the whole courtroom. As Ginger said, yeah. it did not work. And that no. guy is no longer with us. I want you to envision your child goes missing for 31 days and you don't report her missing. Of course, I am talking about Casey Anthony. It happened to her two-year-old daughter, Kaylee. She disappeared. The grandparents hadn't seen her. Finally, grandma called 911 and said, my granddaughter's been missing for 31 days. I haven't found her. And my daughter's car smells like a dead body. Mm. And then the Casey Anthony drama, maybe one of the most intense court battles in the history of America. It's between this and OJ Simpson. She was in court every day in front of 40 to 100 million people. This court case really grabbed the entire country's attention, and in the end, she was found not guilty, and people were devastated. Still lives in the state of Florida, by the way, Ginger. Oh, yeah. We all remember this one because this is very recent. It seems, again, like it just happened yesterday. And it's one of those things, Matt, where if I don't see my cat in the house for six hours, I will report my cat missing. Right. So can you imagine having a child missing for 31 days? And that's the crux of it, you know, because they they brought up her parents or, you know, why, why didn't you why didn't your parents report it? Why didn't you report it? And so many people were implicated in this and they had their lives and careers just ruined by this case. Yeah, it was viral really before things went crazy viral at the time. And the characters in this case were just so wild. You had the meter reader. <laughs> the meter reader. Clark. You've got Jose <laughs> yeah. Baez out there who was just, was there, yeah. everybody was talking about being kind of a bumbling lawyer at the time and then he wins nope. and now he's this famous lawyer who's, yeah. You know, he's covering stars. He's he's representing stars now. So uh, what a wild the case. That, was it Zanny, Zanny the, the nanny. nanny? That's right. Yeah. Who yeah, turned out so to be a person. Yeah. She said the nanny was watching the kid for 31. It, I mean, just the craziest twists and turns in that case. Thankful it's over. And there's a new documentary about Casey Anthony now where she's, she's supposedly talking about it too. telling all. Yeah. So that is one of the reasons we had the idea to talk about the craziest court cases in Florida. 
If you disagree that these are the craziest court cases, let us know. Send us an email, get in touch with us on social media, and maybe we'll admit that we're wrong. But usually, Ginger, we're right. We're not. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching Florida's Fourth Estate. You can download it from wherever you listen to podcasts or watch anytime on News 6 Plus.